You know, Vincent Van Gogh used to eat yellow paint because he thought that it would put the happiness inside him. Many people thought that he was mad and stupid for doing so because the paint was toxic. Never mind that it was obvious that eating paint couldn't possibly have any direct correlation to one's happiness. But I never saw that. <laughs> if you were so unhappy, even the maddest ideas could possibly work? Like painting the walls of your internal organs yellow. Then you're gonna do it. It's really no different than falling in love, taking drugs. There's a greater risk of getting your heart broken, overdosing. But people still do it every day. Because there's always that chance that it can make things better. Everyone has the yellow paint. <laughs>Harley Quinn makeup tutorial today starring my friend Courtney. Hope you enjoyed the intro. Let's get right into it. Hey girl, hey. <laughs> so we're starting off today using a white base. I use an Xjumbo pencil in milk on a flat definer brush to kind of carve out the underside of her brow. I'm using a white base because to be perfectly honest, I was initially going to make her entire face really white, like just the face, kind of like a, a mask or something like that, but I decided against it later on, so do not feel the need to have a white base on hand to do this look. You can do it without it, but this is what I filmed, so that's why it's in there, but I laid it down with the brush and I blended it out with a bigger brush just to make sure that I don't overpower her eyebrows with the white pencil, and then after I kind of blend that out, I went in with the actual pencil itself and just kind of put a little bit all over the lid to create a nice base to apply eyeshadow on top of. Then I'm just gonna take a bigger brush to blend out the NYX Jumbo Pencil. The NYX Jumbo Pencil is a really good base when you're using bright eyeshadows or if you have extremely fair skin, or in this case, you were going to have white skin, but it isn't necessary. You can use any primer that you have. Just thought I'd give you a little bit of a fun fact about it. Then I'm gonna set the eyeshadow with a white, the eyeshadow base with a white eyeshadow, and this is the Kat Von D Celios color from the Shade Light palette, just to make sure there's no creasing, and it makes the eyeshadow base stay nice and matte for us, and it's not too tacky as our eyeshadows are applied on top. Then I'm going in with a peachy transition color. This is Latest from the Kat Von D Shade Light Palette. Just kind of busting it all in that crease. No rhyme or reason. Just really want it to be a nice wash of color to blend in our dark shadow that's coming next, which is Love Plus from Sugar Pill. This is really no different than like probably a million red smoky eyes you've seen me do in the past, but I definitely didn't want to do the pink and blue like everybody else has done. I kind of wanted to create my own version of this kind of Harley Quinn, so I decided to do red and black. I'm just taking the red eyeshadow and putting it in the upper and outer crease and just blending it out with bigger brushes as I go along. And then I took a smaller brush just to make the color a little bit more dense, compact and darker, a little bit lower on the eye. And I just kind of build the sh build the shadow. <laughs> I just kind of built up the eyeshadow and added some shadow and blend it out with bigger brushes to kind of soften up the effect. This absolutely does not have to be perfect. It really doesn't matter. All I really cared about was the glitter being really, really pretty. <laughs> Then I'm going to go in with Kat Von D Shacks, which is a black eyeliner, just pushing this in the outer corner of the eye, just to deepen up the outer corner. This actually was completely unnecessary moving forward because I ended up covering the entire eyelid with red glitter instead of just kind of the inner mobile lid part, but you do what you want. If you don't want to put glitter, you can just make this a red smoky eye and I'm sure it'll be really, really nice. 
Then I started patting that red eyeshadow from Sugar Pill all over the lid with a flat brush just to kind of create a colored base to allow my glitter to lay on top of but it's absolutely not necessary to do this either. I just kind of wanted to make sure that you couldn't see any of the um, white base through the red glitter if it wasn't completely opaque, which can happen. Then I went ahead and applied some liquid liner. This is NYC liquid liner. I put this on just to kind of cover up the lash band that would be applied later on. For lashes, I ended up using Vegas Nay and Grand Glamour lashes at her collaboration with Ilore, but that got cut out of the video. I just wanted to let you know, and now she's giggling because I am hilarious. I'm just adding a little bit of a highlight on the brow bone. It's just white eyeshadow to kind of bring it down and control it. It went a little bit too high for my tasting. I'm gonna pat a little bit of Too Faced Shadow Insurance Glitter Glue all over the mobile part of the lid, and then I started applying the red glitter. It is from Sally Beauty Supply. It is cosmetic grade as far as I know, but I always advise you guys to proceed with caution when it comes to putting glitter on your eyes, but any red glitter will work, obviously, but uh, you know, you can skip the glitter like I said before. Then I'm gonna clean up the shape using a makeup wipe to make sure that we get all that glitter off her face and I can kind of create the angle that I want to create with her eyeshadow on the outer corner. Another reason that I prefer to do eyes first is it makes it easy to control something like this. For her black eye, so to speak, I'm going in with Lazarus from the Kat Von D Shade Light Palette just to kind of create a transition color all up in that crease area. I'll apply a darker color in the outer corner and then there will be black all over the lid. I will say, and I'm just kind of like speeding through this because it's very similar to what I did on the other eye, and this is the darker gray color, Liberatus, I believe. Um, that's going to go in the outer corner, and then I'm going to pack black all over the um, mobile lid, but I'm trying to just give you guys a heads up. This black glitter was a freaking nightmare to work with. I don't even know who it's by. I think it's by MAC. I could be wrong. But black glitter is very, uh, it, it can look kind of like fungus or something all over the face if you can't get it all off. So. I don't know if I would have done the black glitter again if I could do it all over. I'm not sure. Maybe I just don't have a good formula of black glitter. I'm not sure. Um, but So you could totally just pull this off, as I said once again, with just the eyeshadow. So you could have a red eyeshadow eye and then a black eyeshadow eye and it would be just fine. But now I'm packing this all over the lid um, just to make sure that once again you cannot see any white base through the black glitter that's coming. Then I'm going to clean it up again to make sure there is no eyeshadow fallout underneath the eye and to sharpen up the outer corner to give me the shape that I want. Going back in with that glitter glue and then I'm going to start dabbing some of the glitter onto the lid. Once I went in with this, I was really just going to keep the glitter on the mobile lid like I did on the other eye. But once I did that, the glitter made the lid so dark on the inner part that I had to take it all the way over because it just looked weird to have kind of a lighter outer corner and a darker inner corner. If you see what I mean, like there's a clear separation. So I went ahead and just took the glitter all the way across the eye. And then I'm not 100% sure if it's in the video, we'll see in a minute, but I did the same thing on the red eye. Instead of having like that kind of depth in the outer corner with the eyeshadow, I just went ahead and took the red eyeshadow. Oh, hi Herman. This my, this my handsome boy. You wanna go say hello, handsome man. Um, but yeah, no, so that's what I did. It's not in the video, but I did take the glitter all the way across her red eye as well. Now I'm just counteracting some darkness underneath her eye with Benefit Erase Paste. This is the darkest shade. I wanted to do something really bright underneath her eyes because she does tend to feel like her under eye area can be pretty dark. So I wanted to color correct it a little bit more extremely than I normally would for the sake of this makeup. I put the really dark color corrector underneath the eye and then I blend it out with... I don't want to call it dark, it's just extremely true orange, which is going to really cancel out any blue or gray undertones. After I laid that down and blended it out with a sponge, I applied the Makeup Forever Ultra HD foundation stick all over her face. This is her foundation stick, so that's why I have no problem applying it directly to her complexion. And then I blended it out with a Sigma 3D HD Kabuki brush. After that, I'll just hit it with a beauty blender sponge to absorb the excess product and make sure there are no harsh lines. Then I'm going to apply her concealer. This is the Shape Tape Concealer from Tarte all underneath her eye area. I kind of wasn't sure if it was worth it to include this in the video because the focus really isn't on the complexion. It's these eyes and kind of these faux tattoos and the really cool messy makeup, but I threw it in there. You guys know the drill, so I'm just going to kind of let the... Uh, 
the video do the talking right now. Concealer underneath the eyes, bridge of the nose, forehead, and cupid's bow. If you want to see some more in-depth information about concealer, how to apply it, how to blend it, how to highlight, please check out some of my other videos. Then I went ahead and moved on to bronzing her skin. I used the Tarte Park Avenue Princess Bronzer. This is her bronzer. I actually really do like the shade. I need to pick one up for myself. I did want the skin to be really, really pretty and glam because, I mean, the glitter and all the, the zhuzhing and the corset, like it's a very glam version of Harley Quinn. So I did want to keep a beauty element to it. But once again, like I said, it's definitely not the focus. So feel the need to omit any steps that you want to. Then I took this contour powder from her from sephora it's actually amazing i need to pick one up it's such a good shade it's perfect to contour and fair squint squint <laughs> then i hit the scan with some pixie glow mist give a little bit of dew per y'all's recommendation and i'm gonna bust a little bit of a highlight on the top of those cheekbones this is becca's champagne pop it looks beautiful on her if i do say so myself she's laughing because i'm awesome then I started the process of kind of roughing up her under eye makeup. Now, here's the deal with this stuff. Like, obviously it's meant to look like messed up makeup, but if you don't do it the right way, it can take away from the effect and almost make it look like the crow a little bit, which is rad, but that's not what we're trying to do in this video. So I just kind of took my time and took little bits and you can see oh, that black glitter over her face, by the way. Do you see what I'm talking about? It's out of control. Anyway, I just drug a little bit of that black eyeshadow down. I blend it out with my finger, blend it out with a brush. I'd kind of take it out a little bit. I use my hands a lot to smudge it up because I want it to look very organic. But you can totally do this however you prefer. I mean, you could honestly just rub some eyeshadow all over your face and it would totally look super cool. Put some bottom mascara on the beautiful lower lashes of hers and kind of smudge the mascara out as well. And I didn't include in the video of me doing her red eye because it's basically the exact same thing on both eyes. Now I'm applying her face tattoos. I drew a little heart on one side of her face using some, I think it's a Mayron Paradise paint. And on the other side of her face, I drew some Harlequin diamonds. I'm looking at my phone for a frame of reference. I just threw a bunch of different tattoos on her. I put some all over her arms. I put some on her knuckles. I put some hearts on one side of her neck. And then I wrote rotten on the other side of her neck because I thought maybe it'd be cool to tie something from the movie into it, even though this is not inspired completely by the movie. It's inspired by a bunch of different images and versions of Harley Quinn. But like I said, you can add as many. If you're better at freehand drawing than I am, you could really get crafty with this. I wanted to draw, um, I was really trying to draw a hand on the back of her, a hand on the back of her mouth, <laughs> a mouth on the back of her hand, but it did not work out. Now I'm just doing her lips, a matte red lip will do. So I'm going in with, I think this is cherry lip liner from MAC just to outline the print of her lips, which does not need to be perfect, like I said, because after I go in with this lipstick, which is Creep by ColourPop, I'm actually just going to mess it up with the back of my hand to create the effect of her lipstick kind of running. You know, she's been out like beating people up with her whack-a-mole hammer. So, I mean, her makeup's gonna get messy. You can see me kind of going right now, trying to smudge it up, but yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thumbs up if you did, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.